Hey there, everybody. Welcome back with the plat for platypus is the name, and welcome to an Octopath Traveler 2 video. Today we are talking Hikari. We're doing a full Hikari breakdown of exactly why I think Hikari is so powerful. But we're gonna be doing one of these for each character, kind of giving you an idea of what kind of equipment maybe you should be looking for, what kind of jobs pair well with them. We're not gonna go too deep into the party composition because that requires a lot of knowledge, a lot of the characters. So we'll probably do more uh, team comps a bit after we do this series. Uh, we'll go a little more in depth, but we'll do some basic ideas probably uh, as we go. But we're gonna start with the full breakdown of Hikari. Now, before we get too far into it, there will be spoilers in the sense that I'm gonna be talking about all the jobs that are in the game. So if you don't wanna see any of the secret jobs, if you don't wanna see late game equipment, things like that, this is your warning to leave. Now, without further ado, we're gonna jump into it. So Hikari is a very uh, simple yet powerful character. He's he's actually, he, he is pretty interesting uh, and he can be simple. You could also do a very spicy thing with him, which we'll get into in a second here. But basically, Hikari does one thing very well and nothing else very well. He does one thing very well, and that is killing shit. He is very good at killing things dead. And so no matter what you're going to do with Hikari, you're really going to want to focus on him killing stuff. This is further emphasized by his latent power. That gives him three different attacks that are all good in different situations. Um, however... They're all they're all killing stuff, right? It, there's no like flexibility in this regard. It's not like Agnia, Throne, Partitio, where you just get like Throne lets you do two actions, Partitio gives you full BP, Agnia just lets you break abilities to make them target everyone. This kind of stuff is not at all what Hikari does. He just kills things. So we're gonna kind of look at what you want to go with Hikari and why you may or may not want to go certain things. So as far as we're looking at jobs here, we're going to kind of go through all of them. Starting with, you know, he starts as the warrior. Obviously, all the stuff here is very, very good. Um, really quick before we get into it, let's actually, before we get into it, let me just take a look here at the, uh, I didn't have the EX abilities in my first Akari video. So the two hidden EX abilities are Shin, Shinjuman Giri, which is like, I think it's similar, if not the exact same name of the first ability you have in the game. I think it's a little bit different, but this is like the, final ability that you get for beating the story and it's an incredibly powerful attack you hit everyone and then you hit one person there are better attacks but this is pretty good um and then ultimate stance extend the reach of all your of your attack to all foes for three turns this ability fucking blows it is terrible nearly zero percent of the time will you ever want to use this for almost any reason um definitely my least favorite ex ability that i've seen so far in the game but let's kind of go through the jobs here so uh, like there are minor reasons that you might want to go cleric on Hikari, but for the most part, most of these classes are classes you're not particularly interested in. The only reason you would consider going cleric on Hikari is one to get some of these abilities. I suppose, you know, you just, you switch to it, use JP switch out. Um, but is to get like mystical staff, right? You have a double hit staff attack. That's like the only reason you would maybe want to do it. Um, the only other reason is if like you really feel like you need a second healer and for some reason no other character could do it because they're doing more important things. I don't think you need this at all. I think it's uh terrible, but like that kind of goes with the dancer as well. The dancer has like one attack and a ruinous kick is not very good. I mean, ruinous kick is fine, especially in the earlier game, but this is more something that uh, support characters do when they don't have anything they need to do so they can at least break a shield, you know? Um, and the dance abilities aren't as good with you. Kind of the same with Merchant. Uh, it's just like, it, so we're gonna, we're kind of going through all of them really quick and why you probably don't want to pick most of these classes because like these classes have the ability to deal damage and stuff. But like with the Cleric, you want to be able to pair it with something else that does magic with the uh, Dancer. Like this is almost entirely support. Merchant is almost entirely support. Yeah, you could get some Arrow of, of Fortune stuff going on, but that's mostly a like a, um, that's mostly a farming technique. You don't really use it in boss fights unless you're farming JP in boss fights. Scholar is actually a very, very interesting one on Hikari. So if we're talking in the, the if you get to the late game, Hikari has a totally powerful potential magic user build because Hikari has access to magic attacks that no other character in the game can get through his challenge system, right? So a perfect example of that is if we go to the, um, th it's actually the town we're in right now, luckily. 
if we go ahead and head upstairs, I'm sure there's like many more of these. Like I found all kinds of different magic attacks, but just one example here. If you come to this guy, you can get compound formula. This attack deals lightning, fire, and ice damage to a foe or something. So no one else has an attack that does like this kind of thing where it hits these three elements all in one attack. Uh, and it's powerful too. And there's more powerful versions of this. Let's just uh, kill this guy really quick. I don't know how hard he is, but we'll just smack him really quick. So I could take a look at what we're trying to do here. There we go. I just want to see what the ability does. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. So Scholar is a very good potential late game build for Hikari. Deal fire, light, and dark base damage to all foes. So very powerful three hit to all foes. Um, it, it, there's like lots of examples of this throughout the world, but there is a very real Hikari magic build. But what really makes it come together is you need to have the Arcanist class. Once you go and you can equip the support skill. So I recommend from the early game on, just give all of your fucking um, nuts not all your nuts, but all your um, strength increasing nuts. I think I've already given them all, but give all your attack strength increasing nuts to Hikari. And then later in the game, if you wanted to switch, it doesn't, you didn't fail. It's still good. You could now go to equip support skills. And once you get the Arcanist, let's say instead of um, peak performance, I can equip this. This equalizes the physical and elemental attack of a character. So. Hikari has a base 528 physical attack. This will bring his elemental attack all the way up as well. The reason that his physical attack looks so higher is because I have accessories on and upgraded accessories. But if I switch the accessories to elemental attack focus accessories, you could basically flip and then have 828 elemental attack on Hikari as well. Very easily because it's super high physical. This will allow him to go a full magical build while he also has access to magic abilities that no one else has access to. So it's a it, it's kind of like a, a build that I want to try, but I haven't really done it because it hasn't made sense yet. But it seems like a really, really good thing to do. And now this is kind of going to expand, ex, expand like, yeah, you could do this with the cleric as well. It's not like inherently worse with the cleric. But again, he's still good at killing shit. You don't really want him supporting things. You want things to kill shit. So you get, might want him as um, you might also want him as the. Uh, Arcanist itself. The thing is, the Arcanist only one character can equip, and there's some really good support abilities in there. Um, so I, I think you'd probably be better as a scholar if you're going for a magic build. Now, as we get into like the more physical classes, these all have some reason to take them. I I tend to still err on not using these classes specifically. So the like there's thief like yeah he could heal himself who really cares it hasn't really been a big deal for me at all in the entire course of the game like i just have a character that could heal and then that's that um being able to swift step is not how you want to spend your turns surprise attack is powerful but you get so many really strong sword attacks that this is not the this is not a sword attack that you go into this class for um corrosive and shackle foe are both good but they're not insanely good for what you want to be doing um, and the final ability, the the one that is an AOE dagger attack, again, it's good, but Hikari already has stronger attacks than this for that BP cost for the most part. Um, so I'm not really into the Thief. The Thief, I think, is one of the weakest classes in the game for sure, besides on Throne, um, because she has some special EX skills associated with her. Um, but that makes her stronger more than the Thief itself. But we'll get into that on her video. Apothecary. Now, this one is a, um, I actually really like, I used Apothecary for a while here because I really like the, um, no, no, sorry. I used a different class for a while. The Sweepy Cleave, Poison Axe, like it's all like good. This is fine. But again, this is more support stuff. Like how often are you going to have Hikari using Weak to Poison and then Poison Axe or Replenish Health or Rehabilitate or Healing Touch or Icicle or even realistically the Axe moves? Like it just, he never wants to do almost any of this stuff on his turn. Um, Hunter is a class that I think is very, very well suited for Hikari. As you can see, I used it here for a while because it's mostly attacks. It's really good at uh, basically Kalevian Blow is incredibly strong and you get a bunch of really cool, unique buffs from bosses. This is one that the, it's kind of, I need to make a list of what Kalevian Blow can do, but I fought a boss that like every now and then you'll fight a boss that has an elemental weakness and Kalevian Blow will enchant your weapons with that weakness as an element. 
So like if they're weak to fire, like I attack the guy with cleaving blow and the enemy enchanted my weapon with fire damage. So then I, whenever I attacked him, I broke two shields or one extra shield every time I attack. So cleaving blow is a very powerful ability. Precise shot is also an incredibly strong ability. Very good for breaking shields when your sword isn't cutting it, when they're not weak to sword, but they are weak to bow. This is pretty good. Um, and the, uh, the final ability is like fine, but I really think cleaving blow precise shot makes this a great second class. You don't really use the other stuff, but that's okay. Um, this ability just too support focused. You basically never want to do anything that this class is doing on this character. It's great to have in the party. This is not great to have in Hikari. And so this guy, and then right here, we kind of fall into the same category as the scholar where it is reasonable to do but you're giving up a lot more because you could have up to th four scholars in your party you could have oswald and then three additional scholars um you can only have one arcanist you don't want to have seal of diffusion seal of immortality seal of eternity on a character that is only pretty much wanting to attack um so this is something that i think is just better suited on a different character in general because of the limited nature of it and it's an incredibly powerful class um you don't want to give up that seal of diffusion for anything at least in my opinion so the last two classes i think are both good choices but with caveats so inventor is a insanely ridiculously powerful class it has a little bit of the elemental stuff not insanely good the elemental bomb bottle is a little bit weak and you only use it once like every four turns so it's not great but it's okay but the changeable catapult the hastening hammer the critical scope and stuff are all like every one of these abilities is fucking nuts super powerful abilities and even the attack ones are pretty good it gives you a pretty good physical attack bonus for using this as well the issue is like the biggest issue with this class is that i'm not sure it's better than the hunter and what you want to be doing at sakari and also agnia is such a fucking good inventor it's ridiculous being able to turn all of these abilities into targeting everybody is fucking busted. Our car's coil, um, the hastening hammer, critical scope, the springy boots. These are all abilities that absolutely are ridiculous on Agnia. So the fact that if you don't have Agnia in your party, I do think a car can be an okay inventor. The hastening hammer can really help you get close to damage cap, but he's already got some incredibly strong abilities. Um, so I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it, but it is, it's good. It's definitely a good class for Hikari, but you use these abilities like one time in the fight. It, again, you don't want Arkar's coil on him for the most part. You want that on a different character that isn't trying to kill shit, but it's still, it's, I think it's a reasonable class. And then finally we get to probably what feels like to me, the Hikari class, the design to be the Hikari class. I've gotten some pushback on this where people are like, why would you want arm master? on hikari when he already could use several weapons and uh if it, it makes his it's redundant i disagree wholeheartedly um this ability this class is so fucking strong especially on hikari the fact that it one it gives you the largest physical attack bonus which is more relevant early than later but being able to just on the first turn six-fold strike with hikari and find out every single physical weakness that a character has while doing good damage is great all right i know you could do that with any character but a lot of my other characters they're doing important shit you know they're actually setting up for um the turns for they're they're getting ready to buff they're getting ready to do um their their divine skills to help hikari kill shit all right so like this is something we don't i don't want to spend one of their turns with just trying to discover weaknesses when Ikari is already doing that because he's not doing anything support wise he's trying to get the kills so this is another way this is basically a way for him to use analyze and attack a, for a fuck ton of damage in the same turn um the other abilities here like one these are all pretty good let's be honest they're all pretty insane but cosmic roar is the highest damage ability i think i've seen in the game so far i think i got up to ninety five thousand damage so like three four thousand damage below the 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 high damage cap not the nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine but the ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine this is the ability that got me the closest to it where you could even have hikari defend on turn one if you're going if you're going really hard and you manage to break the foe like you could have hikari do this on turn guard and then the next turn he goes first guaranteed and then you have him cosmic roar then you have thrown on your team to thrown a to take an extra turn and suddenly this ability because the longer the more actions between the hit when he goes and the end of the turn 
the more powerful this ability is this this ability is it's the most powerful single target damage ability that i found in the game so far um it's just insane and plus like ikari having access to all weapons as the best physical damage dealer in the game is not a bad thing it's not redundant you want him to have access to stabs and bows and daggers you know um it's very very powerful to have all of the weapons on one character because to be fair he's the only guy that really needs to deal damage at least on my current setup you can have all kinds of different setups and whatnot but hikari is able to hit damage cap or nearly damage cap for me most of the time he's able to i hit 150,000 with him in one turn because i had a setup where i did the cosmic roar did like 95,000 damage and then i had a second then i still had three vp after that and then I used a full 3VP latent power and I did like another like 50,000 damage, right? So you do like 140,000 damage in one turn. Like it takes setup. Don't get me wrong. It's not like he does that every turn, but it is something that um, I think is only possible with Hikari Arms Master, at least in my current stage of the game. It feels like he is built for this class. So to kind of go over the classes that I think you should consider with Hikari, again, to highlight, I think Arms Master number one, Number two, I think, is Hunter. Hunter felt incredibly powerful and carried me through a large part of the game. Hikari Catgirl for the win. And then finally, if you want to get spicy, I think that a later game Scholar build is very reasonable with Hikari. Um, to get access to some good elemental attacks, you get access to other elemental attacks through your um, challenge ability. And uh, I think this is like an interesting build that I haven't experimented with but i really i don't know like why you would do this it's not going to be better than the physical build probably but i really fucking want to do this really bad maybe have a 999 elemental attack with the scholar super ability on him so he hits three times maybe that's just like enough to make it completely broken um i'll have to experiment with it but those are kind of the breakdowns for what he is doing here so let's look at some of the best in my opinion support skills for hikari so I actually think th there's this changes over the course of the game for sure, right? Like in the beginning of the game, you don't need deal more damage. I need deal more damage at this stage of the game. Otherwise, Hikari is leaving way too much damage on the table. Um, it, this basically gives him 10 times more damage by having this equipped. It is kind of annoying to have to take one of your support skills and make it this, but it's I think it's okay. Um, now, upgraded accessories and peak performance this is one that i think might change later into the game now like right for a really long time this is insane very 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 powerful so upgraded accessories raises the attributes of the equipping character's accessories by 50 percent. it doesn't say that but for example i have champions belt one champions belt two so now ikari has plus 300 you know 150 150 plus 300 physical attack and plus 300 critical just from his accessories um, and it, they both prevent surprise attacks from enemies. So this is insane. He has 300. This is look at his, his base attack is 828 right now. That's not including when I have a weapon equipped 999, 999, 999. So you, the, the, here's the issue is if you get your attack so high where the weapons, physical attack is no longer good because it's not using it like you might want to you, this gives you the freedom to use weaker weapons like um what, what's a good example here let's say that i still had 999 here um on one of these lower attacks but like um now i like if i had slightly more attack i'd be able to have 999 physical attack but also use a one a weapon i like the visual style of but i could use something like the helm cleaver in theory where it's like all right slim chance to reduce targets physical defense so you could use these weapons with secondary effects that you like um just as a additional basically because now like if you don't need the flat 300 attack it's a little bit different when you're playing the um arms master because they have this is how you unlock the skills but like if like all right i don't want to use the protector's bow i want to use the uh slim chance reduce targets evasion with the engagement bow i'm not losing anything by doing this right like in fact i'm gaining speed so it's actually this is a more powerful weapon than the protector's bow when you have this kind of stuff so this is why I think upgraded accessories is really good, but it could potentially fall off because you do it. There is a point where your your stats get high enough where you don't need that, right? Let's just say I remove upgraded accessories for heightened senses, like I lose attack. But when I look, like I'm going up to 999 on several things, even with losing a hundred bonus attack, right? So 
is that really the most important thing in the super late game i don't know i still kind of like it because it does give me the freedom to switch the weapons around um but also maybe like i could change one of my accessories right maybe i could have an accessory that gives me um more whatever sp he has a lot of sp problems so i do think upgraded accessories is an incredibly powerful one and that you should probably be using deal more damage 100 percent. like i already said is going to be needed later now probably one that i'm going to recommend on literally every character is going to be step ahead um this is the equipping character will act first at the start of battle this is not worded in a way that i think is clear this does not mean that you get a move before your enemy in a turn when the battle starts this means all characters with a step ahead equipped get a free round without the enemy before the enemy ever gets their first round so you start the combat it's you and every let's say if you have your whole party equipped like i do your whole party has a full round of setup before the fight begins it's insanely powerful to be able to have a full turn of setup before the fight begins especially if you're running something like cassie and you just want to give the whole party full bp turn one before the combat ever starts this is insanely huge i recommend it on every character hikari is no different it allows it, it might be less important on hikari than other characters because he's not doing as much setup but this allows you to one get some damage in start breaking shields right away um, but it just, it, it just, it's so good. I feel like once you use this, you kind of don't go back. And if you don't want Hikari to use this, you can then have him guard on the first turn. Um, you know, you have this, you have him guard on the first turn. If you don't want to do anything, then he's guaranteed to go first on the turn after that. Cause guard moves you up in the timeline. Now peak performance is basically peak performance is what I switched to after, um, summon strength was no longer good because you don't need the physical attack. There is a chance bolstering break is good, but when you're using Throne, you already get the physical attack up on your characters. Um, so I don't feel like this is actually that good to, if you're running Throne. And I'm running Agnia, who can also do this whenever uh, they want. And he doesn't always break the characters, right? So there's many reasons why I think bolstering break is not incredible, even though I do like it. Um, but I, I honestly think peak performance is where it's at. Uh, just increasing damage how much is it increased by i don't know but like i'm trying to hit damage cap i got stuff to do now if you're going around not doing boss fights i don't think you really care about um peak performance i'd probably get rid of it for like a full power because you just start every combat with your uh latent power full you do your aoe attack and kill all the enemies um that way this is just like a farming technique or how to travel from point a to point b uh in general but other than that like I don't feel like there's that many that he's really that interested in. Like, again, if you want to, you got to make a spot for equal might, then you're going to, for an elemental attack build, that could be very, very powerful. Um, then maybe you start using things like price of power, right? You you double the amount of SP consumed, but you also deal way more damage. Um, and then, uh, like, there, there's reasons why I wouldn't take some of these other ones, like enables equipping character to more easily land critical hits on broken foes. I think this ability is fucking trash. One of the worst support abilities in the game, specifically because I use the inventor and the inventor has the critical scope, which guarantees for like four or five turns critical damage. And Hikari already has 568 critical. So it's like, this just feels terrible to me. Um, if you're having trouble surviving, Fruits of Labor is always good, right? This is like an Onion Knight style thing. It gives you extra defense based on the number of skills you've learned. But other than that, I think that's going to be kind of it, what he's going for. Now, for like equipment, I highly recommend if you're going for... An... This is not early game, but you could farm these champions' belts. But they're, they're going to be kind of hard for people early game. But, you know, you can get things like the... um. In general, you can get other physical increase damage one, like the physical belt, things like that. Just kind of do path actions to get around. Like, it's pretty self-explanatory, straightforward. You want physical attack. You don't really care about critical that much. Um, I think it's probably the worst stat because the uh, the inventor scope exists. Um, but other than that, I actually would highly recommend having at least one ability that increases the SP of Hikari because he has really low uh, SP. So I usually equip something like this, like... A little bit less physical defense but he gets more sp because once you're up to 288 it's not as bad but like he starts he's at like i don't know like i feel like i have 60 at a point so i gave him a bunch of nuts to increase it and then it's much better overall but you could farm these champion belts if you come down to the arena i believe you have to complete hikari chapter 2 to actually get access to the arena 
But once you do, you can go here and you could choose the fight. It's a difficult fight, all right? It's going to be it's going to be way too hard when you get here. But you come back in your 40s and 50s, you should be able to manage it. And every time you beat that fight, at least the two times I've done it, they drop a champion belt. And this will absolutely if you use champion belt combined with the upgraded accessories from the um the the, the support skill up, upgraded accessories from the inventor, Amir is going to break the game for a long time. You're going to trivialize all the difficulty for the whole game at least until you get to the post game which i'm still working on i'm not there yet so uh, i'm getting there so i can actually see how strong uh the le super late game is gonna be but all these chapters chapters that i've left if i take hikari he's gonna solo them no problem he's just that strong um absolutely a complete monster but yeah i think that's pretty much the whole hikari breakdown i tried to give an idea of what his really good skills are his really good abilities um what classes he's good as what he kind of builds you want to go for him um you can go like you can go a surprisingly cool elemental attack build that i would love to try it's actually not that hard to have him hit uh 999 elemental attack because of the really cool arcanist um style but yeah if there's anything i forgot to mention or didn't do properly let me know this is already kind of a long video but i think it's worth it to do a full breakdown of a character if there's anything else you want me to include in the future ones, I'm going to release this one and take some feedback. I want to make sure that I'm, you know, I got seven more to go. If I'm missing anything, I want you guys to let me know now. Anyway, much love. Perplatypus is Perplatypus. I will see you in the next video. Peace out, friends. You have a good one.